The 30 day method essentially makes it where you have time to declutter anything you want. So I'm here to explain what it is and how you can use it to become clutter free by Christmas and set yourself up for success. The excuses so many people have is that they don't have time or they don't know where to start. And the 30 day method eliminates both of those. It's not just for decluttering, it's for any goal that you have, but it really works very well for becoming clutter free. And I first learned about it from John Acuff, who is an expert on achieving goals. So basically what you do is you choose a goal, in our case, decluttering, and then you choose a smaller category from that goal to work on just for one month. So for us, I have chosen clothing. So if I asked if you have time to declutter your clothes in one day or even a weekend, you would probably say no, especially if you are a beginner with decluttering. But if I gave you an entire month, you would probably think that's a lot more manageable and achievable even though you might still be a little hesitant and nervous depending on your schedule. But even if you're gone for an entire week, you still have three weeks to work on decluttering clothing. So it's still possible using the 30 day method. It also gives you built in reminders. So at the end of every month, you are naturally reminded, at least this is how it worked for me. It's that, Oh, Today's the 27th. I need to make sure I finished everything in that category for the month. And then you are getting to the beginning of the month and you're like, oh, what do I start on next? And it's kind of exciting. Now enter the list. So this is amazing because you've already done the work ahead of time. And in this case, I've done a lot of the work for you. You might just have to tweak it and adjust it a little bit according to the amount of clutter that you have to deal with. But for the clothing list, some of the things on the list might seem weird. For example, I included in clothing a lot of the bedding, and there are reasons that I did these things, but it's also okay if you switch these up. But I wanted to point out some of the reasons in case that makes you decide to keep them how I have them here. So bedding is really large, sheets and towels, these are items that you can make one decision and get rid of that thing and it frees up so much space for other things. And it really helps you to gain momentum and see the difference that decluttering is making. So that's why it's in the first month category, even though it's mostly clothing besides that. But I also consider it similar because it, they both affect laundry as well and putting away laundry and having space to put laundry. So this list should include every type of clothing that you have so nothing is getting overlooked and you can rest in knowing that so you can just focus on the task ahead of you instead of worrying about, oh, but I need to do this and make sure I remember this. So that's why I'm sharing the whole plan with you now. I mean, just briefly, but each category so that you can take the time to prepare better if there's something that was overlooked. You can go ahead and add that and then it's not overlooked anymore. After clothing, the next list is entertainment. So this includes books, CDs, DVDs, and if you don't have those items, if most of those things are digital for you already, then you can focus on something else, board games, puzzles, office supplies, old devices and electronics. So it really varies based on what you're starting out with, but that's why having a month is super helpful. So you can spend a week on books, a week on CDs, a week on DVDs if you need to. The list is also important because then when you do have a moment to declutter, you're not wasting time and brain power trying to figure out which thing you're supposed to declutter next. You just go to the list and then you have it and just work on that until you run out of time. The next category is basically kitchen stuff. So I really try to do 
starting with the easiest things. So you might want to switch entertainment and kitchen depending on which one is easier for you and will make the biggest difference in your day-to-day -day life. So for some people, entertainment will be easier because either they don't have as much or knowing that you have digital options and copies can make it easier to let go of the physical ones. But if you're still using and depending on physical copies and you don't like reading on a Kindle or you don't have streaming services or don't want streaming services, then that one might be a more difficult task or just might not make as big of a difference because you're not getting rid of as many. So feel free to switch them around, but if you don't know which one to do, then you can also just go in the order that I have it already. So then the third month would be kitchen. And this includes everything from dishes to cleaning products, food in the pantry, storage containers, appliances, hand towels, grocery bags, and it's helpful because you've already been decluttering at this point. So you've kind of gotten used to getting rid of stuff and also have gotten better at it and been able to see the difference that it can make so that hopefully this one goes faster and you realize more things that you can let go of and will be okay with it. I do keep my items for a week or two in my donation box. And sometimes I will go pull things out and I'm okay with that. Some people are like, no, hide it and get rid of it as soon as possible. But for me, I like knowing that it's there in case I'm like, oh, I got rid of 10 mugs. Maybe I should have only gotten rid of eight. And so I can grab my next two favorites once I've lived with it for a while and seen how it is. And same with clothing. Of course, a lot of things can be replaced, but sometimes I will get something back out and then, you know, I can always donate it again later. So I like to take things slowly and get used to something, but some people like to just do it faster and not ever have to deal with it again. But whichever one seems like you'll regret it the least, then try to go with that. Okay, I'm going to just quickly go through the next few categories and you can go to my website if you really want to study those more and see those and make a copy or whatever. So next would be everyday paper. And what I mean by that is we are not tackling sentimental like letters or irreplaceable photos and that kind of thing. We are dealing with piles of mail, flyers, newspapers, magazines, even bills, receipts, that kind of thing that don't have sentimental attachment to them. You can also use this month to go through a junk drawer and Christmas cards, I think are a nice transition from everyday paper clutter to sentimental clutter and birthday cards because a lot of times those are just signed by people and they don't have a note with them or even you could go through like I had wedding cards graduation cards that I kept even though it was just a signature so in the moment it was great and I loved receiving that but I don't need to keep it with me for the rest of my life so you can work on those in this category if you would like, but you could also move them to sentimental and wait. The next one is to give you a break from paper clutter for a while. So instead of doing everyday paper clutter and then going into sentimental clutter, I put the everyday paper clutter before the craft and hobby stuff. So this is kind of miscellaneous because it's basically anything else you didn't get to at any other point. So I included cosmetics, toiletries, jewelry, and like I said, like hobby and craft supplies. So camping gear, 
art supplies, that kind of thing. And I don't have kids, so I didn't have to spend as much time on that kind of thing. So there are a couple of options for you if you have kids. First, I do want to say go through all of your own stuff and your own categories before you start getting rid of other people's stuff, unless your kids are like not old enough to make the choice on their own or care, you know? So then I would save a category for kids till the end and just add on another month for them. Or you could add a month for kids clothing and then a month for kids toys and do it that way. But if you did just a month for kids, you could do one week on their clothing, one week on their toys, and that kind of thing. And then last is the sentimental stuff. So there is definitely a reason that we don't start with that. This includes photos, notes and cards, letters, memorabilia, old journals, old art or gifts. And I included tax info on this one too, because even though it's not sentimental, it is different than everyday paperwork and can be more difficult and take longer. So if you're fine with doing that earlier, then you can do that, but you can also save it until this part. So I can go through my clothing now like in a day, but it still takes the full month or more to go back through my sentimental items. I do pare down some every time I go through and sometimes I'll read through more than I did the last time, but we will talk about that later when we actually get to that month. But I just wanted to kind of let you know, we will get to it at some point. Another benefit of the 30 day method is that you don't feel like you're just working on the same goal all the time. So even though you, you will be decluttering for the entire six months, if you have that much stuff to work on, it won't feel like it because each month is a fresh start and a fresh category. And you're also feeling more accomplished because you can see your progress because you're actually finishing one category before you move on to the next, at least for the most part. So let's say we do clothing and then we move on to books and that just feels completely different. And you're marking something kind of big off the list each month. Although day to day and week to week, it might just be something smaller that you're finishing, but it still gives you that progress. It's amazing. Okay, now for the most exciting part, what this plan looks like for you. When I followed this plan, I started in January and used the 4th of July as my goal to finish because that is Independence Day in the United States. And so I was ready to celebrate freedom from my stuff as well as freedom as a country. And this was actually recommended by one of my readers and I was so surprised at how much this really motivated me to continue towards my goal just to know that I had a deadline and I would be done and wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. So yes, I still declutter to an extent, but not to the extent that I was doing for this six months. And I definitely took a break after the six months. So even though six months or Christmas time might seem so far away right now, it's still a goal and still an ending. So I recommend doing that even if you think you'll take nine months instead of six months. Still like, find a holiday or a birthday or some date that has meaning to you that will be super easy for you to remember so that you can look forward to that and being clutter free by that time. Or even if it only takes you three months, set a goal that's closer, like clutter free by back to school or something like that. And even though this plan takes about six months. I'm still calling it clutter free by Christmas because I don't want you to feel rushed and then give up if you don't have time or a family emergency comes up or you're like, oh, it's summer. I have a vacation planned that has been planned for months. I'm not going to change that just so I can follow this decluttering schedule. But if you do have the time and you are going to be at home, 
for all of this time. You can start in May and then you can also be clutter free by Thanksgiving, at least here in the States and enjoy and relax for that whole holiday season, even before Christmas. But I also wanted to build in that time in case you're not finding this video until June, then you'll still be able to follow the plan with us and be clutter free by Christmas. Another thing that you can go ahead and do now, if you've already found me in May, then you can get started with setting yourself up for success. And there are several ways to do this. One is to just go around your house and take a video of everything and or take pictures so that you have the before pictures. And so many people skip this and then they really regret it because you can't go back in time to how cluttered it was and you definitely don't want to, but it is awesome to see the difference once you have the clutter-free space, then you do want to take pictures and be able to show the difference. But at first, people don't do it because they're like, this is ugly. Why would I want a video of this? Why would I want pictures of this? And so they don't do it. And then they always come and tell me they regret it. But I will say you can skip it. It's fine. I used to say don't skip it, but you can still declutter and have a clutter-free house without it. I'm just saying you'll probably regret it if you don't do this. And it only takes like five minutes. Even if you're opening cabinets, which I do recommend, and taking pictures inside of drawers and stuff like that. So don't forget like closets and open behind doors. Don't just do like the grand room. But I'm also saying don't let that stop you if you're just like, well, I can't declutter until I've taken a picture. No, just go ahead and start. But the reason I say go ahead and do your whole house is so that one, you don't have to remember next month or next time before you declutter to take pictures. But also because sometimes you'll think you're just working in this one area and then before you know it, you've ended up going on this in the other room or working on these other areas and you actually make a lot of progress but you didn't think or want to take the time and get distracted by trying to take pictures. So go ahead and do it all at once and they'll just be there waiting for you. I also recommend finding pastimes that have to do with decluttering. So when you're not actively decluttering, you're just hanging around, trying to pass time, scrolling on your phone, make sure that if you're on Instagram, you have accounts that are talking about getting rid of stuff and decluttering and simplifying your spaces and listen to podcasts, like wherever you spend your free time. Email, if you're checking emails, have one that you subscribe to that sends you an article on decluttering or, you know, an audio book or a regular book. And what else is there? Obviously YouTube videos. There are even TV shows about it. So add those to your lists and surround yourself with that type of content at least for the next few months. Because when you're intaking all of those ideas, then once you're actually to the decluttering, it's so much easier because you're like, oh yeah, I wanted to try this thing. It's more exciting because you know just what to do and you know just what sounds fun to you. So it helps it go a lot faster. Another thing you can do is go ahead and set up a donation station. And my book walks you through all of these things and so much more, but I'm trying to make these videos so that even if you don't have the book, you can still do all of it. But if you just want the book so you already know what to do before all the videos come out, then I will leave the link to that in the description. Another reason that this plan works is because there is built-in breathing room each month. So even though I've given you an extra month, even within each month, there are times where you could take a week off or you could do everything in one week and then have the rest where you're just going about your regular life. It really doesn't interfere that much. So that's what makes it sustainable because I found that working on decluttering for more than 45 minutes was just too much. So 45 minutes a day, unless I was working with someone else, which I usually wasn't. So that's really in the grand scheme of things, not a lot of time because it's just for six months. It's not for the rest of your life. So. You can do things like put a pause on certain things maybe you're volunteering for or you're doing extra and you can cut back your work, your hours at work. And since it's just temporary, you can do that 
and become more clutter free and then go back to having more hours of work and volunteering. Or you can also just do five minutes every day and get through it. Or you can do a little bit every other day until you have finished each category. I will also be releasing videos each month on that specific category so I can give you some reminders and tips and how to deal with certain problems that arise. So if you have any questions about this, please leave it in the comments so that I can address it as we go through this. Also, I would just love to know if you are planning to try this. So just drop an emoji in the comments and that will let me know that you are on board. And my next video is going to be about three quotes that really changed my mindset and motivated me to declutter more and still motivates me to declutter. So I kind of wanted to put those in this video, but then this was getting long. So be on the lookout for that video. I love it because then you're gonna be able to make so many beautiful memories in your home during that time while family and friends are home and around potentially more, especially like your kids, if they're home from school more at that time, and even just taking pictures at Christmas time with your family in your home and not having a ton of craziness in the background. 